Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 50 of the podcast. It's the 13th of December, 2016, as I record this intro. In this episode, I chat with Roberto and Emily Lujano about their unschooling journey. I met Roberto when he approached me about translating my book, Free to Learn, into Spanish. I really enjoyed working with him and wanted to learn more about his family's unschooling experience. This is the first time I've actually spoken with a couple on the podcast, and I really enjoyed it. I love not only how the conversation flowed between them, but also how they flowed in and out of the conversation to meet their children's needs. It was a great example of unschooling in action. And I'm happy to announce that the Spanish translation of Free to Learn, titled Libra para Aprender, is now available. You can find the ebook on all the usual online retailers, Apple, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and so on. You can also get more information about it on my website at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash books. Thanks so much to Roberto for his hard work and to Emily and all the beta readers for helping him out. As a personal update, uh, this last week has been really busy with getting my free intro ebook, What is Unschooling, and this Spanish translation uploaded to all the ebook retailers and getting the information up on my website. And I'm recording this intro a day earlier because tomorrow Rocco and I are off to New York City uh, to go visit Lissy for a few days. I'm really looking forward to hanging out and I'll let you know what we got up to next week. And a big thank you to everyone supporting the show on Patreon. I deeply appreciate your support. I love that you're helping me share unschooling information with anyone who's curious to learn more and explore ways that they can live this wonderful lifestyle with their family. If you'd like to support the show, even for as little as a dollar a month, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash exploring unschooling. And for the quote this week, I'd like to share something that Emily said in our conversation. She said, you are not trusting the process and you are not trusting your kids, but also I realized it is because I do not trust myself and I never have. That's what I mean when I talk about digging deeper into our challenges. She explains it so beautifully. Uh, just like they say, if you do not love yourself, you cannot love anybody else. It is the same with trust. If you do not trust yourself, then you are always going to be questioning. You know, the fears will always take control. Because if you cannot trust yourself, then you cannot trust your partner and you cannot trust your kids. You are always looking for the negative. You are always looking for what is the ulterior motive. You are always looking for what is lacking. Now, I thought that was such a great point. Because if you don't trust yourself to recognize the good moments, then you won't ever see them. And if you don't see those wonderful unschooling moments, how can you build trust in your children or in the process of unschooling in general? When fear develops, when we are feeling challenged by things, it most helps to keep digging to find the roots. Keep asking ourselves why we feel that way. To replace fear with curiosity. Try it and see what you discover about yourself. And now, on to the interview with Roberto and Emily. Hi everyone, I'm Pamela Riccia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Roberto and Emily Lujano. How are you guys? We're doing well, thank doing you. great, thank you. <laughs> Yay. A, a short introduction. Um, a few months ago, uh, Roberto re approached me about translating my book, Free to Learn, into Spanish. Um, we chatted about how we each saw the project. We worked out a plan we were both very happy with, and he got to work. I really enjoyed working with him. It, we had uh, emails back and forth and questions, and it was really fun. So I wanted to chat with him to learn more about his unschooling experience, and his wife, Emily, has agreed to join us. So to get started, can you guys share with us a bit about you and your family and how you came to unschooling? Yeah. 
you want to start? Um, <laughs> we're, uh, well, it's, we're a family of five. We have uh, Max, who just turned eight in September. Um, uh, Archie, who is about five and a half. He's, he's um, uh, birthday's in spring. And then Clementine um, is uh, two. She just turned two in September. Um, they were all born at home. Uh, and um, when Roberto and I were talking about it, I guess the uh, home birth is kind of where it all started. Um, uh oh, I think something came unplugged. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Clementine just threw, threw a ball and it hit the wire, so I was sure something. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so we. Um, we, uh, we, I, uh, I wanted home birth because I wanted, I, well, I guess I never liked the idea of having a birth in a hospital. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it seems so cold and, um, you know, um, it, I always kind of thought it sounded awful to have a bunch of uh, strangers around <laughs> and people going in and out. And, um, it seemed like such a, an intimate, um, experience to me. Um, and it doesn't seem to feel like that a lot in the hospital and and um I guess I've always been one to sort of question authority too or have a little <laughs> bit of an issue a bit of an issue with authority so you know I don't you know usually in the medical field you you got to do what they tell you sort of a thing and I didn't want that and uh um so I uh you know at first Roberto was a a little skeptical about it. Yes. <laughs> kind of scared yes, him. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. When I first brought it up, he was like, oh no, which what's crazy I did she have. Um but um he uh had just started listening to some uh, a, a philosophy show, an online philosophy show and and I guess the guy had talked a lot about substituting fear with curiosity. So he started being more curious about home birth and uh and the more he looked into it the more he was like oh yes we can't go to a hospital <laughs> we got to do this at home so he was fully on board but sorry long story short we don't need we weren't here to talk about home birth but my midwife um she's just this wonderful lady and when we started going to see her she would ask us you know when max was born we didn't know he was going to be a boy but because we didn't want to find out but um she would ask about circumcision. She was very much against that. And, um, and she she wasn't pushy, but she'd ask questions and wanted to see what we thought about it and, you know, and then recommend us, you know, information or things. And, uh, and you know, she didn't she didn't circumcise her son. And she also, we, uh, we started looking at the vaccines. She didn't vaccinate hers and we didn't want to vaccinate ours. And, uh, and she was also a homeschooler. And uh, so, um, and just with you know reading you know with 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 the home birth and the, we you know all of them are nursed like clementine right now is fussing because she wants to nurse and uh, it's like her favorite thing to do um it, you know just the uh the sort of um you know all the decisions from infancy were about having um a stronger bond with our mm -hmm. with our children um, which we didn't really get and um something that we wanted and it seemed to all sort of, you know, one thing lead to another. You know, we wanted to have a bond and, you know, we wanted the home birth and the, and the, the babies to nurse and nurse for extended nursing. And, um, and you know, we, we knew we didn't want to spank our kids like we were spanked. And, you know, and uh, um, but just I guess just having the, the bond as a priority was like, when Max was a baby, we knew we wanted to homeschool because we uh, we didn't want our kid being raised by somebody else, you know, <laughs> being away mm -hmm. from us so many hours of the day. And um, but um, we also we had gone to some like meetups at my midwife's office uh, after we'd had Max just to, you know, hang around uh like-minded parents when, when I became a mother the first time I was really lonely uh, yeah. Roberta you know Roberta was still working full-time I didn't really you know I was just here all day you know you know uh with an infant and and that was when we when we got joined the meetup it was a way to get out and connect and um my midwife was giving away uh, some 
old books that she had. She had kind of her own little library where people could borrow. And she had a lot of parenting books. But uh, one of the books she was giving away was Summer Hill by A.S. Oh. Neal. Yeah. And that kind of, <laughs> go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, I was just saying, yeah, I know that. I know that book. So that's a cool one to get. <laughs> yeah, no, we just, it was, you know, it was kind of random. And then, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. And it kind of led us to, to John Holt and, and, uh, but also just the, the type of parenting. And like I said, the, the, the wanting to have a bond and have a kind of relation, have a real relationship with our kids, which we never had with our own parents, um, kind of you know, un unschooling made so much sense. Well, in more specifically, I guess, radical unschooling, because it kind of, you get, you get to a point where you realize that where there's any sort of control, there's no relationship. And without, um, without, you know, you can have a bond if you don't have a relationship. You can't have a connection without, you know, a relationship is a connection. They, you know, they go hand in hand. And mm -hmm. and where there's control, there just is no connection. There just is no uh, relationship. Um, in any, uh, you know, parent, child, uh, husband, wife, you know, you know, partners in any way without um, with control, you can't have an open, honest, you know, trusting uh connecting relationship and so um then we kind of went re really you know we were really sold on the radical unschooling idea <laughs> but um probably around the time what max was probably like three three or four yes, when we yes. really were getting into that and um yeah, because we saw the possibilities because i remember when she came to me and she said oh, i want to have my baby at home i only knew that the that you that the you had the babies at the hospital, and yeah. you didn't. It was, was crazy. <laughs> and my parents told me, "Oh, that's crazy. You, you you should have it at the hospital." But once I realized about the the process, you know how home birth made sense, then I started questioning myself. I started, well, "What else is out there that we don't know?" And, and with that came the vaccination and the circumcision and all that. Not just uh, not just saying, "Oh, I don't want to do this," but really investigating and reading about the, the topic and realizing that, well, circumcision is not necessary and vaccinations are, you know, more dangerous than people might think. And, and it was just observation and just a, a learning process, you know, that took us from one thing to the other and until we got to unschooling because then we started questioning, okay, uh, we want to homeschool, but w what else is out there? Well, what can we do? Uh, and then we found unschooling and then we wanted to know more about unschooling. And we and we found this conference in New Hampshire in was 2013. Uh, yeah, I think it was yes, 2013. Yes. Archie turned two while we were there. It was in April. And yeah. it was uh, radical and schoolers. And I remember getting over there. We we drove over there, so it was about 1,200 miles <laughs> yeah. by car and, from but, Atlanta. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, Georgia, Georgia. We live in Georgia, so it took a while. But I remember getting there and feeling so at home. You know, feeling like I arrived to a place that I wanted to be, and everybody was like, "We." You could feel it, you know, the connection with everybody. Yeah. And I felt like this is the place I a sense of belonging. To be. Yes, yes. Yes, because that I never felt before. before that point it was like uh you we felt just opposition with the you know, anybody that was around us or you know or just people feeding into your own fears. And when you go to these sort of unschooling conferences you don't get that. Which is really nice. Uh <laughs> you know, yeah, I people know. I ended up I ended up driving from Ontario down to South Carolina to go to our oh, wow. first conference because, yeah, I just I needed to see people face to face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who were living this way, right? Yeah, don't make you feel like an alien <laughs> yeah. or 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 too idealistic, you know, or whatever people yeah. say. Because I was like saying what? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say well, like Roberto. I was I was telling Roberto the other day when he when he was talking about all the things it just got this sort of snowball we started questioning everything at, you know sort of started with home birth but it was like uh I was telling him the other day it was like we started this own sort of radical revolution in all our lives in our own family like we just started realizing all the ways that other people make decisions for us and we allow that and um or let the status quo run our lives rather than really critically thinking about everything we do and why and 
and um, and really making a decision just for ourselves, you know, and not for anybody else, and wanting to have that example, you know, for our kids to uh, yeah to 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 decide things for themselves and not for anybody else, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's funny because what I was going to say was was the same thing. <laughs> Um, I loved uh, what Roberta was saying about, um, you know, when you start questioning everything and the point isn't, you know, as you said, and, and you said there too, Emily, it's not to like, just make the opposite choice. It's the critical thinking piece, right? It's the yeah. investigating and seeing what really makes sense for you and following that and, and how you can, how you're, you know, modeling living that with your children and, and helping them to pick up those skills, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, can you give us a little bit of an update on uh, what your kids are enjoying at the moment? Because I, I love to hear, hearing what unschooling kids are up to. <laughs> um, well, um, they, uh Max, they're, Archie and Max are both a lot into, you know, watching YouTubers and uh, <laughs> Max is into, um, really into uh, a game. Uh, well, no, he, he watches, he watches like videos and YouTubers playing. It's called Five Nights at Freddy's uh, or they also call it FNAF. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he got really into that. We still have a bunch of drawings that my, that Roberto did uh, for Max's birthday in September. There's still like these huge like posters he made. They're all over the walls. They're all the different uh, characters. characters from that, from that uh, online game. Um, and, you know, they, they get into watching YouTubers play those games, but then that leads to watching them play other games. And then the, some of the games they, you know, they try themselves and, uh, yeah. And Max got into doing the game, but in real life. Oh yeah. We play it in the house a lot of times. So we turn the lights off. <laughs> and we have to make the house all scary. Yeah. It's a flashlight and, he, and we play uh, five nights already. And it's really scary. He, he has some moves and, and screeches and sounds effects. <laughs> scare me and I know yes. I know it's just acting and it's just math but he does scare, <laughs> yeah scare he gets me. really yes. into it and he gets <laughs> us into it and uh, he pretends to be the different animatronic you know characters that are like coming for you um <laughs> and uh he's really they he was really into Minecraft before that you know very much into Minecraft and and usually playing and building and like crazy but also um you know youtubers that you know yeah. that he that likes he likes to watch yeah. also a video Planet. game called little big planet little big planet he, yeah. we have a playstation he's really into little big planet cuz also it's a very creative game he likes games where he can make his own costumes Ooh. and 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 create Ooh. levels and things like that yeah. so he does a lot of uh, a lot of that, um, and uh, he has a lot of apps and games on his phone that he likes to play. Um, he's uh, he's he's always liked reading. Uh, he likes comic books a lot, dif you know, different kinds. He'll try. He'll just look at all the different kinds if we go to bookstore, or library, and, and pick out ones that he likes and. Yeah. He reads them. Um, he likes, like, when it comes to reading, he likes the books that have like illustrations, like yeah. the, the comics. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. graphic novels. Graphic novels. That's um, his, I think his favorite. And uh, Archie, Ar Archie's also really into you know watching things online and stuff, and um, and he plays Little Big Planet too. And he's recently gotten really into Minecraft. He liked it when Max played it, but he's gotten more into it now. Uh, he plays it by himself. Um, he's into trains. He's always been very into trains, yes. He's been collecting all the Thomas trains for oh, for years yeah. now. He has tons of the wooden ones and then the track master ones, which are like battery yeah. powered. Um, uh, he can tell you which one is which just by oh, looking yeah. at their faces. He can name all of them. <laughs> yes. You could hide the, every part of the train in just the face. And he wouldn't, I mean, and there's hundreds of them. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. They come out with new characters, <laughs> you know, you know, more, more to buy, you know, he, yeah. uh, he will, be, he will basically work for train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's very into them. And, uh, and, uh, and they, you know, they love just climbing and jumping. A lot of times Jump. they'll take a break from their, their, uh, Jump, <laughs> jumping on the bed, sitting in front of, of the computers or, you know, yeah. games for hours and they'll go, They'll go jump, you know, jumping on the bed or, or jump, running around the house or playing, like Roberta said, recreating the the games, you know, in, in real life. And, 
And Archie and I sometimes we ride bikes together. You know, we try, we you know we try to go out some too. But um, Max lately, well for about a for about a year, he was like really not wanting to get out, uh, just wanting to to stay home. And and uh, uh, um, well, that goes to a different subject of of Roberto and I having to de school. We're still struggling with that. We've been doing that for a year since probably about four years or so since we've been first getting into the unschooling. It's something we're still working on, but uh, that was hard. Matt, we've been struggling for a year when Max didn't want to, you know, get out. And, you know, it's hard when you're in all these different sort of homeschool groups where they have all the different field trips and things going on and. Okay. Okay. And you feel uh, like you're doing something wrong, you know, when you're when your kids don't want to do any of the what you think are really fun activities or you know yeah. learning experiences, and they just are, you know for about a year or so they haven't been into doing any of that very much. And, uh, I get all worried because that's what I do, but <laughs> I'm trying to talk myself off of that ledge <laughs> over and over. Yeah, it's. Um, well, I love yeah, that we're... that substitute fear with curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that you talk, gets you asking questions. I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I try to remind myself that quote a lot. But and that, then, that well, and Clem- oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, oh, no, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so, well, Clementine, she's also she's um she's into trains like her brother Archie. She always wants to play with him with the trains. Um, a lot of times that creates a bit of a conflict, but um, but yeah, she loves the. Uh, she really likes the trains and the cars and um, she likes to paint and draw and she likes to be read to and um, Max was always, he liked to paint when he was Clementine's age a lot too. He would always want to paint. Um, she's just gotten into that. Uh, she loves to be outside. Max did too when she was, when he was this age. Archie too. Uh, that's Archie in the, when it was spring and summer still, he would, he would go outside and um, he liked worms. to go out and collect worms. He liked to just go out and just dig in the dirt and collect worms. And he—he's—he was definitely more outdoorsy. He'll go outside with me and do stuff. Um, um, yeah. So Clementine, she loves to be outside. She loves to go out. I think also because she's the youngest, and we try to be going out and doing things regularly outside with the boys. So she's from the time she was born, basically, she's used to going out, you know, and doing things. Yeah. Especially because Roberto was here. Since he took a, a you know a sabbatical to intentionally to be with us, um, we've been able we were able to get out and do things. Um, makes it easier to have another adult <laughs> um, when yeah. you have a tiny baby and and two two little kids. Um, but so she's always used to going out and doing things. So she loves to get out, even if it's just to go to the gas station or the store. She wants to go. You know, she doesn't want to be uh, left. Um, she um, she's very active. Um, she loves to. She's very. Uh, fearless like she'll yeah. jump off things she'll climb she things that are way high you know she uh she just wants to do it all and she wants to do things herself and she uh no, we're trying to encourage that yeah i'm trying to i was i i uh i regret very much i was very open for protective with max and being my first and i just wanted to do everything for him and and you know help him do everything and you know it not realizing how detrimental that was, you know, to his own uh, confidence and self-esteem, you know, thinking, thinking I was, uh, you know, the, the, the control was definitely a big thing uh, to, I had to let, you know, let go of when we started down the mm-hmm. unschooling path. Yeah, um, but it's a process. We're still, we're still, controlled. we're still struggling. So, <laughs> subconsciously, we keep doing it. So, well, you have all those oh. voices in your head and with all the, yeah. with all the different homeschool groups of, you know, the parent, we're in all these sort of holistic groups and sort of um, natural living type groups. So you have all these sort of ideas that I personally agree a lot, uh, agree a lot with. And then a lot of the things that my kids are into or that they want go against all these sort of ideas. So it's like, you know, I have to remember to trust them and not let all the other voices. Um, that take was, over. that was something I found too. Yeah. Especially those first two or three years, you know, as I learned more and transitioned, like, like you said, like there's other groups that I felt connections to, you know, um, even, you, you know, school groups because my kids were in school before I found out, right. Um, yeah. about homeschooling and, and took them out. Um, but it did take a while, like, 
to transition. You know, I was, I still got some things out of those groups, but then after a few months or a year or two, you know, um, they, I slowly, you know, kind of dropped off as in, you know, I didn't, you know, uh, want those messages anymore. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't helping me anymore. And, and yeah. it, it wasn't about, um, you know, going silent. It was that I found, I eventually found other groups that also made sense and were in the direction that um, seemed to work better for, for me and the kids, right? Because yeah. like you said, it's like, oh, but these are the kids I have, you know, these are my yeah. kids. They're the, these are their interests and, and what they want to do. And these things over here, this kind of information um, is is helping me build that. Whereas the other stuff, every time I hear it, it has me questioning myself or yeah, feeling like we're yeah. not doing enough or something. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I totally remember that. And <laughs> and plus, you're you, you know, sorry to say, you're probably always going to be going through these processes. Um, because, you know, as your kids get older, things are going to come up that haven't come up before. Right. So y- yeah. you're going to be you're going to have new things to question yourself about. It's like, oh, gee, I never thought of that. How how am I yeah. going to see that now through this new lens? <laughs> even yeah. 10 years yeah. later, you know, even now, you know, my kids are young adults and and I still there's there's expectations on people at every age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's sure. interesting. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I was just going to say the next question, which we've kind of um, been talking about right here, uh, which was how did you build trust in the process of unschooling? Um, so we've talked about, you know, um, learning about it, thinking critically about it, seeing um, our own kids and what works with them and seeing um, how they, how, how they're learning and figuring things out for themselves. Is there any uh, other little pieces you'd like to add of uh, ways that you guys develop trust in that process of unschooling as you learned more about it? Yeah, I think like you said, it's, a, it's an observation. You know, because mm-hmm. to a lot of people, a kid in front of a computer is just wasting his time and he's just being getting isolated all day long. All day long. <laughs> but, if, but if you really take the time and sit down next to him and start seeing what he's doing and what he's learning, what he's learning and then start talking about the thing they are doing and why, then you realize that during those four or five hours, he's learning. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's gathering a lot of uh, information and he's learning and he's... he's uh, communicating with other people or, or he's making money or he's collecting money to buy certain thing in the game. So he, it's a process that if you don't really go deep into it, you, you will miss it. And then to, to you, it will be, he is at the computer, he's in front of the computer all day and he doesn't do anything. He's just zoning out. He's yes. just vegetating. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 it has required a lot of observation and involvement to, to realize those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, um, uh, sorry, there's a fight between Archie and Clementine at the moment. She went into yeah, the room where all his... Yeah, sure. R- Roberto's going to, to okay. help. He, uh, he has a room where all his trains are, and he wanted to shut her out. <laughs> she was uh. heartbroken. <laughs> he, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, Roberto and I were talking about this. Well, we were talking about it months ago, and then we were talking about it again before the call because... Um, the question about trust and and I was bringing up to him that conversation we had a while back about um, about um, I was telling him uh, you know you're in all these different homeschool groups and you you know you try to drag your kids to the events that you've tried to convince them to go to or and then you see the other kids that are into it and your kids are not and they're like can we just go <laughs> you know or or you just see what all the other parents are talking about you know the diff- they use curriculum or their kids are into this or taking classes in this or that and you feel like you start to feel like I hate to sound so negative, but like you feel like such a loser, you know, and you feel like mm-hmm. I'm doing everything wrong and there's so many things I'm not doing. Oh, you know what? You know, I can't get, I get this right. And, uh, and you're not, not trusting the process and not trusting your kids. But also, like I told Roberto, I realized it's because I don't trust myself and I never have. And that was, yeah. that's the biggest hurdle for me. And I still struggle. Um, 
if I didn't have kids, I would be beating myself up every day. Even if I didn't have kids, I always was that way. I'm There's extremely else. hard on myself. Yeah. Yes. It's I'm never good enough. I'm never doing anything right. I'm always failing somebody, always failing myself. I got that message mostly from school. You know, I wasn't, <laughs> you know, the, the star student. Um, and, uh, I just, I wasn't ever a good fit, you know, um, in school. And, um, so I, you know, just never finished things on time or finished things like everybody else did. Never, you know, made the grade sort of a thing. And, uh, I still, I have that voice inside me all the time and I still struggle with that. And I was telling him that, you know, that's what, that's, that's the biggest hurdle. That's the thing I have to break. If I, because just like what I say, if you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. It's the same with trust. If you don't trust yourself, then you're always going to be question. You know, the fears will always take control. Um, because you, if you can't trust yourself, you can't trust your partner. You can't trust your kids, because you're always looking for the negative. You're always looking for what what's, you know, mm-hmm. an ulterior motive. You're always looking for what's not, what's lacking, you know, yeah. or what's not uh, get, you know what's supposed to be and not be, you know, if you're doing that to yourself, if you're not trusting yourself. Um, so still struggling with that, but knowing that, you know, that it's all my own stuff, you know, (laughs) like the whole de-schooling process is, is, you know, all your own stuff. (laughs) That is just such a great point, Emily, because that's exactly it. So often we find, um, that, so much of the de-schooling de- stage and, and, you know, it's just so much about us, isn't it? It's so much of the work that we have to do, have to, that we are choosing to do, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and, and our kids are usually pretty darn good. And in fact, uh, that's why I used to talk about when I talk about like, um, coming to unschooling as like a hero's journey. And I always think of my kids as a guide because, mm-hmm. When I was struggling most, I would say, okay, just, you know, relax that substitute fear with curiosity and just watch them, you know, Mm -hmm. just specifically make myself tell myself not to try to control anything, just watch them. And it would always, you know, manage to bring me back and to realize, you know what, they're okay. I'm just still doing my work. That's, That's a really great point. Thanks, Emily. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just <laughs> I notice when I let the fears take over, and um, I forget that my ultimate goal, and Roberta and I both, our ultimate goal with the unschooling is is a right is the goal we had since they were born is the connection that we is, mm-hmm. is foreign to us. We didn't have, and yes. we we wanted that different in our own family. Yeah, and go ahead. What yeah, the biggest struggle, you know, because we are used to following certain path and this is all new for us you know mm-hmm. it's, even even when you talk about connection when we didn't have any connections so it's very difficult to emulate that to our kids because we didn't have it yeah we, we so still like, are like what is that exactly is are we connecting are we with them it? Yeah. Are we connecting with each is other? Connection? Is this connection? Because we don't know what almost, that feels like. Almost like, like we're, we're, we're like, like yes. aliens. <laughs> like, well, what is this? Aliens on the human planet. What is this that they call love? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing called? All love? the big questions. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I forget what, what I was saying. Um, but yeah. Um, but just... in it's relearning, you know, we're, we're learning like you were saying, they they know this. They know more about the process than we do. Yeah. So we're really learning from them. They have to remind us constantly. Yes, yes. So the only <laughs> obstacle in this process is really us. Is us. Well, our conditioning, <laughs> yes, you know, the, conditioning. the horrible conditioning. Um, but, yeah, no, I think that's what I was going to say is that I, when I let the fears take over and I find myself trying to control again in, in whatever manipulative way I, I'm, I'm doing um, – the the then it's it's animosity you know with max he just gets angry he doesn't want to be around us and he goes further into the into the screens which is what the the big thing that i i think i'm sorry roberto's gonna step away for a second the clementine's (laughs) crying she's she's in that room with archie and i think there's another conflict um um 
What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, um, um, we, yeah, we, I see the, I see the loss of connection like immediately as soon as the, as soon as the fear and control, you know, and they, they just, they uh, just, just like when you can feel any, anyone else's fear coming out of them and, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I mean, anxiety, like Roberta and I struggle because we're both high or high anxiety people. We, we're, we're just very you know, anxious and it comes from, you know, our upbringings. And and uh, when you're around somebody like that, you know, it's it's uncomfortable, you know. So when our anxiety is going up and our fears about things, you can see that he just, you know, he wants to escape from that. You know, it's just they like anybody, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. they feel it just like we can as adults. So we feel and. Mm-hmm. You know, either we're like Roberto and I, we feel somehow responsible, you know, for the other person's anxiety, which is not the case. But, you know, we were also raised to to feel responsible for other people's feelings and to put our second. And um, and, uh, you know, so you you know, I don't want that for my kids. Of course, I want them to not feel like they have to do things to manage my anxiety, you know. And, uh, so it's either they start doing that or, you know, or they feel, you know, you could see like, they feel like a sort of a guilt, um, because I'm upset about something that they're doing when, and then I real, and then I remember, I don't want them to feel like that. I don't want them to ever feel like they're, they have to do something about my feelings, you know? And, Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember, oh, and now this is not what I want. This is not what I want between us. I don't want that sort of second-handedness, that sort of codependency, that sort of, um, you know, put your feelings aside. Uh, don't trust what you want and what you feel, uh, because, you know, mom or dad are upset about this or that, you know, or that. And that that at the end confuses them because then they will start doing things just because to make you feel happy. Yeah. 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 You don't want them to. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of rather because they want to do things. Or like we see from a lot of other parents um, that are in different homeschool groups we're in that um, they we don't want our children to ever feel like or I I guess I shouldn't call them ours. But, you know, Max and Archie and Clementine, we don't want them to ever feel like they have to ever hide anything from us, especially not something that they they like or that they want to do or they're just their feelings about anything that I, we want them to always feel like they could be completely open with us. You know, you always have people telling you, Oh, you, you have to be a parent, not a friend. And I, we both find that to be complete BS. You, you know, you should be, you should be their best friend, you know, that you should be their first friend, their example of what a friend really is more than anything. But, um, but we, uh, I'm sorry, I went off on that little side and then I forgot. What <laughs> oh, yeah, we see, yeah. you know, with other kids, they 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 then end up hiding things from their parents mm-hmm. or, um, you know, they, because they feel they feel that shame that's being um, misplaced, you know, that um, that's being placed on them from something yeah. that their parents have an issue with. And and then they just learn to to hide and learn to to hide what they like and hide what they want to do. And, and that, for that right yeah. there to me, it's like when I see that, it's like, Oh, that's not, that's the opposite of connection. <laughs> you know, that's what pushes me to, 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 you know, that's like the get, clue that it's back. time. It's like, Oh, something, something's happening here for me. And I, I think what I, in the end, cause I remember those times too, you know, it was later on when, um, the stress wasn't there, you know, uh, whatever was feeling disconnecting in the moment and, you know, explaining later on that it was my thing and even explaining, you know, age appropriately just, um, or, or what, not age, but however, you know, whatever level they're at, um, Mm -hmm. To, to ex- explain a little bit about where that thought of mine or that expectation came from, you know, because then we understood each other a little bit better. You know, yeah. they knew more about me. And it was also an example to them, you know, so that when they felt something was off, that like you said, that it was okay for them to tell me why they felt off, even if it was something that you know, I did that triggered something for them or whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was, it was really amazing to me how, um, insightful 
they were even in just short little conversations like that over the years. And then they were able to start, you know, pointing out to me when even why something seemed to be going off the rails at any point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, they really are amazingly, you know, insightful. (laughs) Yeah, so those conversations, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't typically have them um in the moment because in the moment is is um it, it's hard to think at those points right yeah, yeah when you see the the clue that they're reacting somehow it's like oh okay you know i this isn't something i want to push something's yeah. off here and then yeah. you know take some time to think about it but then go back to the conversation later that i found yeah. that really helped oh, yeah hi clementine yeah. <laughs> Oh, we have earbuds. She couldn't hear you, but yeah, she was uh, saying hello. <laughs> I was wondering when I said that. <laughs> um, I, you know, what's really fun is how our conversations have like already led to the next question. Again, the next question was, "What's been the most challenging aspect of moving to unschooling?" So, have we kind of covered that, or is there something else you'd like to add there? <laughs> I think it's pretty. Yeah, I guess you're right. The de schooling for Roberto and I, yeah, all still, that that encompasses, still still is, is, is the struggle and it is still okay. Clemmy, it's still, still a struggle. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next question then. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the translation, Roberto, because uh, you've also translated Teresa Graham Brett's book, Parenting yeah. for Social Change. So yeah. I was wondering what inspired you to start uh, translating books. That's cool. Well, I, uh, I I've always uh, read uh, I've read a lot of parenting books, but uh, specifically this one by Teresa, uh, it just hit hit a nerve. I couldn't identify myself in the book, and I couldn't identify my, my how I was raised and, and my parents, and the way my parents raised me. But also, I wanted to. I started reading it, and I saw a lot of the things that happened when I was little, and I wanted to to communicate those to to my parents most mostly so mm-hmm. i uh I, I wanted i wanted to i wanted them to read the book so i, I started uh, translating it and i remember i talked to a, a friend of mine terry de marco and she uh mm-hmm. she said she said oh well you know if you are translating it uh i know the author and i can get you in contact with her and i was oh that's great mm-hmm. and, uh, and i and i met Teresa, and then i just you know translated the book and then we put it out there and it was a great experience because uh, like i said that book uh, hit a nerve and it was so important for me it was a, a moment that i needed that uh, information yeah, it's mm-hmm. a beautiful it's a beautiful book yeah yes. yeah it's, and it, yeah it's and yeah, like he said, he almost was just translating it for his, really, he for was himself. just translating it for his parents, yeah, yes. for himself. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and he was able to get in touch with Teresa, yes, with Terry, yes. and... Uh, um, um, yeah, and when I was translating, one of my better readers was my dad, because you know, <gasps> he, he's very good at grammar, oh. so he would be reading the book, and, you know, he had to read it, because he had to check the book, <laughs> so it was not... <laughs> it, still, it still didn't... It didn't didn't seem to have any effect. No, it didn't. Them, it didn't. But, but except that, except to push them further away. But, yes, uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it, yeah. it did have that effect. But, uh, but I just wanted him to read it, and that that was my. I mean, he. I didn't say okay that I wanted to read it. I just said, hey, Dad, can you help me? You know, mm-hmm. checking the book, the grammar, it, yeah, and content. Yeah. And he said, oh yeah. Yeah. And, and some things he disagreed. So yeah, I love. I love that you. You know. When that's something that you wanted um, and that you were hoping, you know, this this might help. Um, But, you know, to not I can just tell, you know, in the way you're talking about it, that it it was good to not have expectations on him. Right. Because you you don't have control over how he takes in that information or what he does with it. But, you know, you still found a way to make that connection with him to say, hey, can you help me? Uh, by reading this book through for me and and it just gave created an opportunity right and it just went where it went that's really really cool yes yeah and, uh, and once I, I finished this book and it was published I you know because I, I had uh, I quit my job in in 2015 
Yeah. And I'm one of the. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk about it right now because it kind of makes. Well, that sense. was one of the reasons you started translating yes, the book because yes. it was like, yeah. oh, like I want to do. I want to do this, and I have the time. Oh yeah, and because I, I quit and I and I and I talk, said to myself, I want to do things that I never done before and that I want to do them. And that you're passionate about. <laughs> yeah, and that I'm passionate about it because one of the things about unschooling is that you do what you're interested on, yeah, and what you're passionate your about. Interest, yeah. And at that moment, work wasn't what I was interested on or what I was passionate about, and I, and I couldn't. I couldn't, in good conscience, go eight hours a day to a, to a job that I was enjoying anymore, and then come back and tell my kids, "Well, you know, you need to do what you're passionate, what you want to do." And <laughs> I couldn't do that, so I I decided to just take a take a year off that uh, went into almost two years now, mm-hmm. which yeah I wasn't expecting, but. You're saying it felt really incongruent, and yes. also just oh, yes. in the environment at your work too. Yeah, totally, the environment, the, the yeah. environment of my work was totally the opposite that I that I was trying to 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 uh, create at home. Create at home, yeah. and also yeah. Enc- encourage your your kids to look for. You know, yes. you want the kind, you know, the opposite of the kind of environment you want them to put themselves in. You yeah, can, and it was and it was getting a toll on me because I was starting having a lot of pain, like back pain. And I would get here, and I was very sleepy. I would take naps, and and it was you could tell that physically it was manifesting, you know, in me yeah. that I had to stop doing that. And I, I, yeah, I remember getting here and was so exhausted, exhausted. That was the word. From kind of faking it all. Yeah, day. from so faking it all day. Say you would feel. But when I quit, and then I started doing things here, and I started the translation, and we started doing, we, we lost the the time and days. Yeah. There, there, were, there were times where I didn't know what day it was or what time it was, <laughs> and I didn't care. And at the end of the day, I was, I was so tired. But it was a different tired. It was a tired that you go to bed and you like smile before you're Relaxed. gonna fall asleep. Yeah. Yes. It was much more relaxed. Yes. Yes. It was a more fulfilling tired. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah. And a beat down tire. Yes. But then going back to the books, I, you know, I started looking at the books that really, you know, made a change in my life. And, and, and then I started asking myself, well, you think you could, you know, translate all these books into, into Spanish, you know, because they make that much impact. And I, and I was, yes, I think I can do it. So that's how I got to your, to your book. And that's how I got to uh, two more books that I, I translated. And, and I have another one work that I'm working on. And, and it's just been great. That's awesome. Yeah, I love I love that story. That's it's it's cool when you can give yourself that time, yeah. right, to to discover what what is it that I would uh, uh, like to do. And and it's not like you need some big passionate answer or something. It's just like, oh, gee, you know, because how did you start? You know, I'd like my dad to read this book. You weren't even, you know, uh, talking to the author yet or anything. You know, it was just something you wanted to do that just little step by little step took you here. And now you've done a few books and you're doing more. Yeah, That's really yes. cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and it's a, a kind of slow process for me because I, I read the books and I, I, really, I, I really need to like it. You know, so you you can get involved with it. You know, you can feel yeah. it, you feel the passion. Because if you translate just any book, that, that doesn't really work. Yeah, to, he only me. wanted to translate things that he was yeah into because he was, because really, just the process of doing it is is what you're getting out of it. Really, yes. I mean, it's more just the enjoyment of oh, the enjoyment and the learning. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. You, I read in English and I get some out of it, but when yeah. I translate into Spanish, I get the I get feel that space in my brain, I would say, yeah, yeah. in the Spanish version. <laughs> <laughs> so when I talk yeah. to Spanish speakers, I have the vocabulary and I have the, the sentences and the oh, idea yeah, in too. Spanish yeah. already there in my head. Yeah. I don't have to start thinking, of, how do I say this? How do yeah. I... Okay. And how to communicate with your parents, although we've kind of given up on yes, that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, for all these books, I still have my dad as a better, better reader and I sent him this, the... The, the thing I translate and he reads it. So <laughs> the only problem is sometimes he tries to actually change the uh, yes. ideas, and yes. it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he would say, I don't agree with this author, and he should say this and this and that. And I'm like, Dad, you should write your own book. <laughs> <laughs> write your own book, Dad. That's not the idea that this person is trying to get across. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> and true to form leads us nicely to the next question. <laughs> Um, because what I found uh, really, really interesting about the translation process, because um, got uh, French 
Uh, French Free to Learn was out last year and Spanish one. By the time this podcast airs, the Spanish book will be available. And I've um, been working for over a year now. Uh, Hungarian translation is going to be coming out soon. Um, but as you were talking about, it's not about translating the book itself word for word. It's really about translating the ideas, right? Because so when you take an idea in English to Spanish, um, you may use very different words entirely um, to try and get across that same idea. And I find that uh, really fascinating. <laughs> yes. um, I was wondering if, if you could share an example from uh, Free to Learn. From free to learn, yeah. You know, this is a word that I that I was struggling with, and and, and I left it as unschooling, because uh, there is there is not a translation of the word unschooling other than uh, they call it uh, uh, without school. Mm -hmm. the, the school the school no no that's that, that will be the schooling. Oh okay. The schooling there's a translation to the scholarization, but unschooling there's none, and and there was uh, there was a struggle because I was. Uh, talking to one of the some of the better readers and, and and they were suggesting using Spanish, but at the same time you can do that because the, the word is already recognized here and and it's also recognized in Spanish speaking countries. So if you change the the word to something Spanish, it will get lost. And so, also and, you said the word the the words the other words that you could translate they were already sort of groups yes, using those words yes. and they they weren't technically they weren't exactly the unschooling. Yeah, yeah, they were they representing the same so, movement. They were. Educación natural, stuff like that, 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 that had a different uh, philosophy, different, meaning, different yeah. meaning and different philosophy. So, but on school and it's on school, and you know you can't change that because it comes from here, and it and it, it, it should keep its philosophy everywhere you go. So, uh, I mean, I guess that's not a good example. <laughs> well, that like was the, the ultimate that. example when he was. I, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, when we were. He was like, I, I'm trying to think of an example, and I was like, Well, we had conversations several times about the word unschooling because a few people were trying to encourage him to use a different word or create basically a Spanish word a spanish translation for that word make it spanish you know like make it yeah. you know, kind of own it in spanish and it was like well it really just didn't translate it's like uh like because it's the word itself is a very particular philosophy and um and you would lose the the philosophy when you change the word you know the word really mm -hmm. represented the philosophy and like you said it was already a word that was known in other languages and used as unschooling, you know. Yes. Uh, that, that and that was that was we had that same kind of conversation um, when we were working on the French translation too, and they ultimately decided to stay with the word word unschooling and just have you know a little footnote as to different ways that that it could be translated. But yeah, it's like the ultimate question, right? <laughs> yes. But but then there's other words that, or, or other uh, idioms or idioms <laughs> idioms yeah. that that those ones can. Sometimes they can be translated to Spanish, but sometimes it's a total different idea. If you translate it to Spanish, it would sound boring, crazy. Yeah. You know, so what? <laughs> sounds yeah, like, it's like what yeah. the heck? Yeah. Yeah, but I, sometimes Roberto is talking to me and he'll use like an idiom from Mexico and he'll basically translate it. And I'm like, I've never heard that <laughs> saying before. And I'm like, what? What did you say? And it's like, oh, well, in, Me you know, in Mexico, in Spanish, they have it means this. Yeah. yeah. And I try to think and I try to think of an, a, a similar idiom, but it's not use not using the same language. Yeah. It's not a, it's not yeah and with, and with the with the beta readers, we had people from uh, Peru and we had people from, I think, Venezuela and, and somebody from Spain. And so it, and it was different. It, some people would not know what the, my translation meant, you know, the the the, mm -hmm. the phrase I used. So what I would go is I always back to the to, to the idea. What is the idea behind the, the saying or, or the or the idiom? And I would just use the idea. I would completely mm -hmm. take that part off and then just put the idea, explain it basically. Yeah. So that yeah. it doesn't matter where it was, was in Venezuela, Peru or Spain, they would get it because it was already explained. Yeah, I had um, the two editors working on the French uh, version. One was in France and one was from Quebec, Canada. And and they ran into phrases like that, too. You know, like, oh, that, that French phrase is not going to mean the same to me as it does to you. So they would, yeah. you know, then go back to the idea and come up with a way to say it that the same understanding would happen in both 
countries or people, you know, with a background, um, language background, either from Canada or from France. So, yeah, but I find translating uh, just just really fascinating. I love when uh, people are interested uh, in doing it. But that's why I know when I was talking to you that the for me, the beta reader stage is a really important stage because that's when um, that's when you can see you know, people from different areas, um, how, how they take in the words, because it's fascinating how different it can be, even with everybody reading the same language, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we, we had a lot of good conversations. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah I, I would <laughs> he'd come talk to me. To and, about yeah. it, and, uh, it brought up a lot of interesting yes, conversations. Yes, yes. Yeah, and Emily, getting yeah. to really dissect more the idea. Yeah, Emily helps me on all my <laughs> translations. Sometimes, well, I don't get the, with sometimes I don't get the idea, so I get her to explain me what it means, or what she understood. Or give me thank you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, thank you. Thank you for your work. And yeah, no, it's just we, yeah, we, Roberto and I help each other with with everything. <laughs> it's, um, I wanted to touch back. You you were talking a little bit about um, leaving your job a while ago, Roberto, and I wanted to get back to that for a bit because I love the fluid nature um, of how we make income to support our unschooling lives and, you know, to help bring all of our lives um, more in alignment with, you know, so they aren't draining you such a way that, you know, you're, you're having... Uh, body pain and, and exhaustion and, you know, get, having physical symptoms from it. Um, so you can definitely change over the years the different ways that we come around to meet both our personal and our family needs together and as they evolve over time too. Um, so I was hoping you could share a little bit about how you made that choice and how you managed that transition um, from work to home. Yeah. And then later we'll get to your new upcoming transition. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, like I said, I decided in March of 2015 that I, I had enough of work. Well, uh, we had been talking about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll be talking about it. Yes, more, yes. Like flirting with the idea of yes. him taking some time and, off. And we did have some. Uh, we had a cushion. We had a cushion so that we could make that choice. And it just was the right time. And well, we don't have, we hardly have any debt. Which yeah. makes a huge difference. Yes, yes. So a lot of people live with a lot of debt, and we weren't. Yeah, we didn't so. have any debt, and uh, I used some of that money that we had to pay off the only debt that we had, which was which was house. The house, yeah. Um, a little while after he stopped working, we we made it so we didn't have a mortgage. Yeah, because my mind. A lot of people thought it was. <laughs> yeah, because my mind was, was like, like, why take your retirement pay off the mortgage? But it was like, we pay well. At least we'll still have a house, if you know. Yeah, my mind was. <laughs> uh, what I was thinking is, I wanna, I wanna get as uh, low as possible in, in any bill that I have to pay. So if I can get a job, you know, like work a part time, that I can pay, you know, food and 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 bills, you know. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, it, it's again, um, what you're actually, you know, looking at your own situation, right? Instead of what people are expecting you to do you you can play around and see what really works for you personally and be comfortable making those choices right yes oh yeah his parents freaked out when he yeah told everybody us. everybody freaked they out. freaked out <laughs> do you want me to not elaborate on no. that no. <laughs> yeah. it will be another podcast <laughs> for another yeah. podcast <laughs> no but yeah yeah we got everybody yeah. even even our our friends told me oh that's reckless and why would yeah. you do that and, or well but because they didn't see really the value but i i, I had already seen the value a long a long time yeah. ago even because, if they were gentle about it it was yes. like uh oh you could see their fear yeah. and that's really what it is they're just they're, they're you know they're just they're putting their fear on fears on you into you like they they the i like they would entertain entertain the idea for a second in their minds and it was like whoa you yeah, know like <laughs> i could never do that or you know it was basically how they felt about it was was they were putting it on you you know, it, you know. yeah Sorry, i remember when yeah just one quick story i remember when um when we were telling people you know that uh well i'd left work and then a few months later 
then I had discovered because I had more time to actually, you know, uh, research things. And then I found homeschooling and then I found unschooling. But I remember thinking, you know, because people's reactions were really quite um, almost over the top. They they thought what we were doing was so risky, right? Yeah, so fearful. Yeah. The reactions such, were so Yeah, fearful. so yeah. fearful. And it's such a huge risk and they couldn't imagine doing it. And then I realized, you know, as I thought about it, as, you know, it doesn't, am I missing something? Because this doesn't feel as risky to me as everybody else seems to think it is. And yeah. then I realized I know so much more about my situation and the research and stuff I've done. I have more information about this particular choice than they do. So what they see as risk was a lot less risk to me because yeah. I understood it, you know. So it sounds like that's probably a lot of what was going on there too. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like you, you like you're saying, like you kept like, am I supposed to be afraid? Am I supposed to be worried about yeah. this? You know, you hmm. start to doubt it because, like you said, you didn't feel it. You didn't. But that's a really good point. That like, well, I don't feel the fear because. Well, I have more information. One guy can be, yeah, more information. And these are my particular choices I made for myself, which yeah. in yeah. itself is scary. You know, we're not yeah. trained to to make decisions that are only for us and and that go against anything. And, you know, that are uh, that appear risky to everyone else. But um, but yeah, just that, you know, so much more about your own particular situation. And when people are responding to your choices, they're thinking of it from their situation and from their choices and from what they know, yeah, um, I mean, which it seems so obvious, but it's like, you, I had, you know, you don't think about it and it's like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But also at the same time, you don't want to explain the whole situation to them over yeah, and over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, you don't want to explain because you don't want to convince them. You just say, oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, the other thing they don't have is, is, you know, we know what, we are what we believe we're going to get out of these choices too, right? I mean, yes, yes, when I, when we're when we're choosing unschooling, when we're choosing, you know, different job choices, you know, that kind of stuff, we we know where we're going with it. You know, we see where um, the future and what we're going to get out of it. Whereas they probably have have don't have much of an idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely. One of the main reasons was uh, it wasn't to look for another job that I knew that I knew for sure. It wasn't to do anything else but just spend time with my family and my my children because I realized that I was working most of the day and then I came home tired, cranky, and then I had to go to bed because I had to get up the next day to go to work again. And all your good energy was was being yeah. spent somewhere you didn't yes. even want to be. And I, and I was thinking, well, you can't live life four weeks at a time because you know I have four week vacation. <laughs> so I was like, no, I gotta yeah. I gotta do something right now. I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to get all this you know <laughs> money that will be worthless. Then that was something we we had come to every time we would like start to be fearful of should we do this, should we not? Or when we after we made a decision, it was like, well, we could say for sure that. If he didn't do it, if he didn't take this time when he really felt like he needed to and wanted to and, you know, everything was in him, was pushing him that way. If he didn't and he when he was older, he would regret it. But mm -hmm. he was most likely not going to regret doing it. You know, we, yeah. we didn't know it was it was a leap of faith, I guess. I, I don't want to use the word faith, but, uh, you know, it was like jumping off of a cliff or, you know, jumping blindfolded. But we yeah. we knew that. We knew that we w he would regret not doing it. Yes, so, yes. like that was something we had to remind ourselves of all yes. the time. Yeah, we we I saw it as an investment. You know, they say that in order to get money, you you know, what is it? In order to get money, you have to spend money. So mm -hmm. I thought to myself, in order, it's an emotional investment. In order to get uh, your kids later, you have to invest emotionally in them right now. And that means yeah. being with them and listening to them and connect with them. Not later, because later they'll be grown and it will be very difficult to connect if you don't connect right now. And how are you feeling? Um, you know, are you in a more comfortable place now um, as you're you're choosing to uh, go back to? Is it full time work that you're you're moving on to? You were telling me about a, a new job, and I thought that was cool too. Uh, yes, yeah. Well, it's been uh, almost two years, and I, uh, 
well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of low in loan resources. So that's also one of the reasons that I mm -hmm. decided to go back. Yeah, but that I, happens. But I, but I, yes, but I, um, I, I've done a lot and I, have, I feel like I've connected more with them. You know, it's this more mm -hmm. solid, solid relationship with all of them, especially with my, with my uh, two year old. You know, as I've been home mm -hmm. since she was born and I've been at home every day for, for her whole life. So that, that, that is a, it's going to make a big impact in her life, you know, just having her father here every day. And uh, like I said, it's just an investment. And, and I, mm -hmm. yes, I'm going back. I'm going back to work, but I'm going back to work in a different way. I, I have learned a lot about myself with all these, with all the books I read, with all the things I learned. I'm more aware of myself. So when I go to a working place, uh, it will be different. Oh yeah, I think I mean, I can just imagine the the mind shift, like the totally different perspective that you're going to bring with you. Right. Um, and the connections that you have with your kids that you're going to be able to, you know, come home to and be comfortable uh, reconnecting and building on those. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it sounds like you're in a completely different place now, which I think yeah. will make a world of difference, even even at, at, at work for you as well as at home. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and I had the opportunity to find a company that is family oriented. You know, they are very flexible mm -hmm. with your schedule and also allow you to work at home. And that's what I was looking for. That was one of the reasons I quit my previous job because they were very, very, they weren't flexible at all. And they, yeah, yeah. And that was a big part of, of, of what I wanted to do. Oh, wow, that sounds like you found a, <laughs> found a, a great, well, we'll see. But, um, you know, when, when you actually start there, but it sounds like you've, uh, you know, knew what you were looking for, right? Knew what would work, work better for you. So that sounds, that sounds wonderful. I wish you guys all the best of luck with that. Yeah. And then this time I, I'm, I'm going back, but I still in the back of my mind that I want to get out soon. Oh, yeah, so you're oh. going to go and, and, and save up, uh, you know, try, try to save money while you're there so that you can take another sabbatical. Is that kind of the idea? Yes. That's what I want to do. I want to, I mm -hmm. want to save a little bit and then just, come back and, and, and you just keep doing uh, what, I, what I've been doing. I would like to get more in the translation and I would like to find other ways uh, of, you know, making some income rather than, mm -hmm. going to, uh, the, the, rather than going and spend all day in a place that, that doesn't really fill me up as much as when I'm at home. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what I like about the, you know, thinking of it as, as um, the, the fluid nature, I guess, is, is, the best that I can come up with to describe it. But yeah, you know, as you're, as you're even, um, you know, working at that job, which is more amenable to your family setup, but also thinking about other ways that you can be, uh, other income streams that you can be developing at the same time that maybe can extend your next uh, sabbatical even longer, et cetera. You know, it's, it's all about playing around and, and finding what works for you. And, uh, and, and each, each step, it seems, is just a little bit better mesh, a little bit better mesh as you learn more about yourself and stuff. Yes. Does that it, sound it, right? <laughs> it, has, it, it has given me confidence, you know, to, in doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the things I did while I was in, in these uh, two years at home, I, I built a house in the backyard, a small house by myself. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that, that taught me a lot about about how I work, you know, how I, because I had to basically do the house, but I had to undo, undo it a, a few times because I didn't do it right. So that mm -hmm. taught me a lot about how I, how I work, how I, my mind, you know, works. And, uh, you know, like I, like the most recent, uh, I had to, to install a water here myself because, uh, the, in, the install, the installation was just way too expensive and I couldn't really afford it. And then I had to go back and, you know, learn about how to do it and find the resources. And uh, mm -hmm. and just do it myself, and that and that all that gives you confidence to do things, and and you know, so I, I'm a different person now. Yeah, yeah, no, and you'll continue to grow, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. that's the cool thing, you know. With you know, unschooling, we always talk about how you know, really, it's life, right? And as we figure that out, we figure out so much about ourselves and our own lives too along the way. So I think that's really awesome. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me, Roberto and Emily. I'm She's yeah. off with the kids right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's, she's uh, I don't know it's, uh, what happened, but oh. they are out there oh, in, the, that's okay. in the backyard. Sorry. Oh, awesome. Oh, oh, uh, Say yeah. thank you for me. No, I don't think she's. I don't think she's coming back. No, but, that's uh, fine. Thank you so much. That's fine. It's, We're it's done. A oh, real no. pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, it was. It was great to talk to you both. I, I was so glad to uh, learn a little bit more about your uh, unschooling experiences. Um, before we go, where is the best place for people to connect with you online if they're interested? Oh, I'm a Facebook. Maybe page. they need your translation services. <laughs> yes, I think the the best would be my face. The Facebook page, just Roberto Lujano. They could contact me there. I don't have a, I was working on the website for my translation uh, gig, but I, I still haven't finished it. No, no problem. I, I will uh, share Facebook in the show notes. Yes. Thank you. Terrific. Thanks so much. You guys have a great night. You too, Pam. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. While you're there, be sure to pick up your free copy of my book, What is Unschooling? In it, we'll explore some of the common questions people have when they first hear about unschooling, like how will my child learn? How do I know they're learning? What is de-schooling? And how do I get started? It's also available at many online ebook retailers. And if you'd like to connect online, you can find me on Facebook at Living Joyfully. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.